Hello, my name is Gabriel. I'm an instructor here with Junior Learning that teaches web development. So in today's tutorial, we'll be going over how to generate your first animation with HTML and CSS. Before we get started, some of the basic prerequisites is just like a small working knowledge of how HTML and CSS work. As you can see, there aren't a whole lot of lines of code here. It's mostly just some definitions. So that's all you really need to know before you go into this, and I'll teach you everything you need to know as we go along. So as you can see, we have a small animation here that's just an emoji. If you look at the HTML for it, it's just a small emoji that is rotating back and forth. Now we can do this with just HTML and CSS. Nothing else is required. So the core concepts that we'll be talking about today are HTML and CSS and how you can generate animations with CSS. So inside of this, then we can see that the sushi is on the screen and it's kind of moving back and forth. Now, this doesn't just have to be sushi. It can be pretty much any emoji that you want. Uh, for example, we could have an apple here and still do the same thing or pretty much any kind of emoji that you have. This could even be text if you want it to be like Yeah, so now we have our text that's kind of spinning around and rotating. So before we get started into the tutorial, I'm just going to clear all the code that's currently existing. And here we go. So now we're at a blank slate. There's nothing here. So the very first thing that we need is to create a div that will hold the things inside our page. So let's do our opening and closing tags for the div. And then let's put our actual content into the page. So I'm going to make another div that's exclusively just going to contain sushi inside of it. And you can copy and paste this emoji from anywhere on the internet. If it's inside of like a text message or something, you can copy and paste it there. And then I'm going to give it an ID because I want to refer to this ID later on whenever I want to actually say like, okay, how does like sushi specifically implicate? So then I can have a unique identifier to it. So I'm going to start off by defining inside of CodePen that the HTML takes up height of 100%. So this interface that you see here is called CodePen. It's a place where you can write code off to the left here, like you can see, and see the live results off to the right-hand side. And all the code is pretty much executed in the cloud. So it's really great. And just to make sure that this white space takes up the entire screen of the white canvas area. I'm just going to say that HTML height 100%. To say that it takes up 100% of the screen. Then I use the body element that's inside of all HTML documents, which is pretty much this entire space. It's this entire region all around. And it's just like a child of the HTML. So I'm going to define that the body has a couple of things because we don't necessarily want the sushi to be up in the top left corner, right? So instead, we need to say, OK, we need to move the sushi down into the center of the screen, perhaps. I mean, you could leave it up inside the top left corner, but I personally want to have it in the center. So the way that you do this is also say that the body's height is going to be 100%. Make sure that takes up an entire space. And then I'll say display flex. This is a certain kind of display that allows different elements on the screen to have relationships with one another that it's, well, flexible. And then I'm going to say just by content center in order to make it go to the center of the screen. You can see that immediately loaded. It's right down here. And then I'm going to say align items center. Okay, and now it's in the very center of our screen. But the sushi is really, really small. So we can fix that. So I select sushi with the hashtag to say ID of sushi. And then I can say font size because emoji is technically like text, right? It's a font. So I can say, or it's defined by font. So I can say like font size is equal to 8 EM. And EM is a ratio of how big a certain other font is on the screen. So like 1 EM is like the default. So if I say like 8 EM, then I'll be like, okay, then that's eight times the default. I can say like 100. And then, <laughs> well, we'll see that's really, really big. So we don't quite want that, but let's, let's keep it at eight for now. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, now how do we actually get this to start animating? Now, first off, we have to know about something called keyframes. So think about 
any kind of animation that you see. Well, the computer has to render different frames, right? It has to show you a certain image and it has to show you the next image. This is exactly how movies might work. Like for example, this is one of the first like movies ever captured. And as you can see, you can see the individual frames. Like these are still images that eventually form up the moving image at the end. Now, the same is true whenever we're defining keyframes inside of CSS. But we don't have to define every single one of these frames because, well, that would be really tedious, right? So instead, we define the ones that are most important, the key frames. So what we can do is that whenever defining our animation, then we say at keyframes, and then our animation name will go here. So I'm just going to call this rotate for now. And then I can define certain keys. So I can say at 0%, I want you to be at this point in time. So, okay, so let's say at 0%, I don't want you to do anything special. So I'm just going to leave 0% alone and not define it. But I'm going to say by 100%, I want you to transform. And what transform means is that it will transform into like a new kind of state. So it will be either spinning, it'll be in like a new position, it'll be larger, it'll be smaller, etc. So I can say maybe rotate 360 degrees. So by 100%, I want you to do a full rotation. Okay, and that's good enough for now. That's all we need to say. We don't have to define any other frames. We can just leave that for now. Okay, and next we have to say that the sushi will have this certain animation here. So I can say animation name, and then I use the same name that I just defined below, which is rotate. Then I say animation duration of three seconds. It can be longer, it can be shorter, it doesn't matter. But yeah, we see that array has a single iteration. It's already going around once. Okay, what if I want to go around infinite amount of time? So I can say animation iteration counts, and then I can just say infinite. I mean, this could be any number. This could be like three or something. So it only rotates like three times, but it's whatever you want it to be. So one, two, and then three, ta-da and it stops actually animating, just like we want it to infinite once again. Okay, and now we see that the sushi is kind of moving slowly, and then it's getting faster, and then it's getting slow again. This has to do with something called a timing function, or an easing function. Now, we can define this ourselves. So if we say animation timing function, and we say something like linear, then we see it's like a straight line, right? It just moves consistently all throughout. Now, the way that this is implemented is actually typically like a Bezier function. So it kind of goes faster and then goes slower. It's personal preference, but you can use whatever you want here. I'm going to stick with Bezier for now. Okay, now how do we make this more complex? We're rotating in place, but what else can we do? Okay, so let's try moving from side to side or something, like we did inside of the tutorial or inside the demonstration. So I can now say, okay, what exactly do we want for this animation to do? So at what position do I want to be at, at what point in time? Okay, so let's say I want to give this a new name so that I can keep the old code, side to side rotate. And then, okay, let's say at 0%, I want you to be over on the left side, and then I want you to shift over to the right side like halfway through the animation or something. And then by the time you're done, I want you to shift all the way back over to the left side again. Okay, so we can say this by like, okay, 0% at the beginning. I want you to transform. And then I can say translate X, like the XY plane, right? So I can say like X pixels to like a certain location. So here I'm going to say maybe negative 100 pixels. Okay. And then by 50%, I want you to be like halfway in through the animation. So I want you to be over on the right side again. Okay, so I want you to translate back over 100 pixels over to the right. And also on 100%, we want to be back where we started. So we can say transform and translate X and then go back another negative 100 pixels. Okay, now let's actually use this. Recall that this is a name that we define. 
So it can literally be anything, but we're just calling it side to side rotate for now. Okay, nice, nice. But there's definitely something missing, right? It doesn't quite look right. It doesn't quite look like what we want it to be. Okay, so why is this happening? Oops. Well, one thing is that I have a typo. So definitely don't want that. Okay, so now we see something interesting. We see that from 50% to 100% is rotating 360 degrees. So it's like spinning but it isn't spinning on the way forward. That's because these only know about like the previous one. So 100% is only transforming 360 degrees from 50 degrees. It isn't saying from zero degrees to 100 degrees, rotate 360 degrees. But it's only saying from 50% to 100%. Okay, so let's change that. Let's give this a new rotate value from zero to 50%. So if you say something like 360 degrees, we see, ta-da! Then we see that on the way forward, it's flipping all the way around, and then it's not flipping on the way back. Now that's not exactly like what we expect. We can try a few things. Let's say maybe use negative 360 degrees. See what happens then. So, so we're rotating backwards. That's interesting, but that might not be what we want. You can really do anything you want here. I'd recommend just to like play around and see what you want to do. So maybe you could say like 180 degrees. So it's kind of moving forward and then it moves backwards faster. Or maybe even you can say like scale. So I can say scale and then give it like a value. Uh, and so, <laughs> so scale makes it like really big, right? As you can see, and it makes it like small again because it goes back to the original scale. But so scale just makes a multiplier, multiplier of the current value. So yeah, there are a lot of options here. If you've seen anything on the web before or interacted with any kinds of user interfaces, then you've seen that sometimes they're like really fancy animations. And this definitely is just like the surface of what you can do with animations. But we saw that we did this with like relatively few lines of code, like in total the CSS for a single animation was just around 30 lines of code. That's pretty short, right? And a lot of this you can just like define over and over again. You can say like 0%, 50%. You could add more here. You could say like 25%, like a fourth of the way through the transition. I want you to do like this or something. At this point in time, I want you to do this other thing. There's really a lot of freedom with what you can do with these animations. It's up to your creativity as to how you can use them. So. In order to build off of this, I'd recommend to look at what you can do with like HTML and transform because there are a lot of different kinds of properties. There aren't just like translate X, there's like translate Y, just like rotate like we saw scale, etc. With the animation, you can define a lot of other kinds of things. Like you can have different kinds of like how it renders on the screen, how it kind of like appears for you. So you have a lot of different kinds of options. I definitely recommend that you go out and try and explore. So that's it for this project. I hope you were inspired to go and make your own kind of animation project and play around with this. And good luck. I hope to see whatever you come up with. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Juni Learning for weekly updates on math and coding tutorials. And if you want to keep watching more videos, you can do that right here. Also, if you want to keep learning from instructors like me, don't forget to check out junilearning.com for private and group courses that we have to offer. Thanks so much for joining us and we hope to see you next time.